Previously on Orn's Forge. We spend every moment afraid. Afraid to starve, to be run down by wolves, or, or worse. We'll catch the flame sleeping. We bind it so it won't bite. With it, we will be welcomed. But I believed her then and it saved our lives. So I've got to believe her about this now. Otherwise, what's the point for us to still be alive when everyone else is dead? We can make it by dusk. Keep sleeping a little longer, then everything will be alright. We try to warn him off your way. Now, we hunt. Be quiet already! I'm not even hunting you! You're safe! For now! No one's listening! The shadow of the mountain. The lake has got to be just over that rise at the water's head. Any idea of what's waiting up there? Nothing to say? <laughs> well, let's go find out. Still have doubts about where he's headed? No. I can smell the water. We actually made it. We're really here. Yes! Woohoo! <laughs> yes! I wish you could see it, Uncle. We're here together, though. I can feel it. And you. I carried you and kept you safe, just like Quanik said. You needed me, but now I need you. So... Now what? <clears throat> no! <laughs> hmm. What's this? Some filth. No, it's... <gasps> Let him up! Have a look! <coughs> it's a spark, <coughs> like the sort Sybil makes. <coughs> Please! I can't understand you! I'm not here to hunt! A porcupine... Listen to it, Mule. Wait! Please! You know Oren will want to see him. Plus, Egg will be able to understand him better. For Orin. Up. Slow. What is that? <laughs> My tooth. Uh, I'm going. You don't need to bite. Move. Follow Squirrel. What? What is this place? Bring Orin an egg, quickly. Sprig, Hemlock, you're back early with a blood letter too. Well done. The sanctuary is just prey with teeth? We picked up the Martin's tracks in the old wood. He was headed straight to the lake. Then why did you bring it straight here? It's strange, Kriak, but Orin needs to speak to this one before we decide what to do with him. He's seen the hollow, Sprig. There's only one thing to do with it. Look at those teeth. It stinks. Think it's hungry? What will we do with it? Planning on taking its skin, Hemlock? <laughs> Excuse me, coming through. Hello, little weasel. A badger? Uh, you must lead them, right? Uh, could you tell them I'm not... <laughs> no, no, little cousin. I'm not Oren. He's much smaller. My name now is Egg. Short for Egg Sucker. Cause ha ha ear. No. Teeth? What's the wind blown in them at such a stir? I don't understand them. Please, help. Oh yeah, little cousin. These little guys speak too fast. I'll help. Kill the fleshy two immediately. Oh. They're going to kill you. Orin. He had a spark with him just like the others. He must be here for sanctuary. This place isn't for him. He's nothing but a dangerous beast. You're the only one to draw blood today. Because I won't give him a chance to. He looks more pitiful than dangerous. Weasels are sly. And I've heard all rabbits have grass between the ears. Sybil, nice of you to finally waddle our way. It's her! The porcupine! 
She told my uncle we'd been safe if we brought the ember to the lake at the shadow of the mountain. Egg, he says a porcupine said he'd be safe here if he had a spark. Sybil, what's what you're thinking? I speak well, to anyone who will listen, just as you wanted. A haven for all, you said. I forgot you know much for nuance. He found his way to safety and looks like he's seen the rough end of a waterfall. I don't see how he's any different from the rest. You're nine. Rask. I ye alone. I am the last. It's just me. Hmm. I know what you're thinking, Orin, but he's not one of us. We're digging up new ground. Of course there is going to be strange stones. Then you know what we have to do. To protect our mates and our kids. <gasps> Don't worry, little cousin. The ache stops eventually. <gasps> he came here looking for shelter and instead you <gasps> mutilate him? He's scared half to death and nearly starved the rest of the way. Are you all still so small and afraid that one miserable martyr can make you flee your senses? Sybil is right. Once was enough. The rest of you, go warn the others that the Martin is coming up, but not to run. One skinny Martin isn't a threat to us here. Crake, keep your eyes open. Yes, Hemlock. This is good, Orin. You'll see. So you take the blame if you eat someone then? If you like it, you'll be me. One less troublemaker to deal with. Besides, Egg can watch over him. She'll see that he doesn't get sneaky, won't ya? Yes, he won't get into any trouble, I promise. I don't have my teeth, but I can break his back easily. Hmm. Now we've a pack of killers in our warren, Orin. I won't jump off a cliff because it's the first thing I see. Come up to the forge and we'll walk our way out of this bramble patch. Without bloodshed. Welcome to Stone Hollow, Rask. Was that a bear? Orin killed it and took the island. Sprig, the black squirrel, still marks up the trees like the bear used to to keep the wolves away. He is very smart. Wolves are not. Orin, everyone is skittish. Just the smell of the Martin has everyone jumping at shadows. But no one's bolted, so that's something. We're holding together for now. <sighs> what an ugly bra you brought us into, Sybil. You've been able to play safe from monsters, but imagine a world without them. Charming idea, really. From a porcupine who only has to waddle away from danger occasionally. In a lot of day, my heart agrees, Sybil. But we're not false. You have the power to turn the night away. You've shown them a new path, and now you have to trust they'll follow. If you give the Martin the choice, he'll follow you too. This is nonsense. There's no other path for hunters. He'll kill again, rip someone apart in the dark. Blood, killing, eating. That is the only path hunters know. You're more naive than a newborn kit if you think otherwise. Maybe there's no other path for her either. You'll like it here after everyone gets used to you. See? We have fresh water right here all the time. It's pretty great. Come on this way. My den is down the far side by the lake. It's big and quiet since it's just me there. Well, you won't have any fun What are they doing? Playing, I guess. They get to do that all the time now. Keep them away from the kids. I'd have gotten you both if it were up to me. Go, now. That's Hemlock. I don't like her. She'll bite you for no reason. No one comes down here, so don't worry about her. It'll be nice to have someone to talk to that won't run away or bite. If mice and rabbits and squirrels can den together, why not martins and badgers? See? There's plenty of space. Come on, you look so hungry. I try not to look hungry because it makes people upset. I find lots of eggs and stuff when I'm out digging for Orin. Here you go, little cousin. <gasps> how did you do that? Orin showed me how to do this. Fire isn't scary once you get used to it. Feed it only a little. Keep it small. Don't touch it. Easy. When I was a kid, a wildfire burned down my set. It killed my clan. That was too much fire. Too much smoke. Martin's come from so far away. How did you get all this way alone? There was a call. I... My uncle and I walked here following the porcupine's directions for days towards the rising sun, chasing storms to find a spark. What's a call? 
The seasons are especially lean where I come from. Prey has either moved on or thinned out, so everyone goes hungry. Some years it's worse than anyone can remember. The gluttons will come over the mountain to hunt us. But they don't stop where their bellies are full. They just keep killing until the ground is so red and no one is left to thin us out. My uncle knew they were coming. We had time to hide. He saved me, but he, he, he didn't. I understand, Rask. Everyone sleeps well in the shade. Let me show you what happens when you put an egg on the fire. This place isn't what I was expecting. They took your teeth, didn't they? Orin said he wished he could give them back. Was it worth it? My head used to be filled with angry wasps, and I couldn't do anything except hunt and wait, and hunt more or else they'd sting me and I'd die. That's all there was. I even forgot that cubs can sleep deeply enough they dream. I forgot all about that. But here, the wasps are quiet and I get to dream too. <coughs> Try it, it's good. <coughs> Told you so. <laughs> it can be good here, you'll see. No, it can't be. Uncle? What are you doing here? How? The warm path or the crooked path. No path is long enough to run forever. And all lead to the same place. Uh, Uncle? Death feeding life. You see, Rask? Some must die so others can live. But here, who lives and who dies? <laughs> <laughs> Rask, look, it's you. What are those, exactly? It's their new teeth so they can bite back. Orin made them with fire and a special dirt I dig out of the ground for him. But how? Is it like water to ice, or...? I don't know, but it's not a secret. Orin told me I just didn't understand. Maybe he'll tell you too, even if you've already got your own teeth. Unless Hemlock has her way, I guess. I'll need to forage again. Two mouths together eat more than one. Even two ones. Hey, Egg! Look what I caught! Fish! That's quite a clever trick. No, no, he won't understand you, Sprig. Go slower. Slower. That was clever. Never thought of baiting fish before? Never had to. I'll get more grasshoppers and you can do it again. All right, I can try. Uh, you don't have a tooth. Aren't you afraid I'll attack you? I don't need a tooth to get away from one skinny Martin. Besides, I'm here to keep her from attacking you. She wants me dead. Yup. But I think you deserve a fair jump. 
You came all this way with a spark, after all. Who'd do that when there are easier ways to get a meal? Assuming you can really control that insatiable instinct of yours, having a hunter around to outsmart the other hunters would be a good trick by itself. You make me sound like a mindless killer. Well, if I'm just dumb prey, aren't you a mindless killer? It goes both ways or no ways. I know you're no more mindless than I am, but you do eat animals like me. <laughs> well, slower and stupider animals than me, but you know what I mean. Am I wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was really good. It was very delicious. <laughs> you know you're right. But it was to survive. I don't want to eat any of you. I can control myself. Uh, an animal can choose to starve, you know. A sick animal, maybe. You don't look sick, just skinny. You see, every dre has its tails of some long winter, fighting tooth and claw over caches, raiding neighbors, spilling blood, going to any length to keep from dying, breaking all taboo. My point is, every animal has limits of suffering until nature intervenes one way or another. And nature is brutal. Orin is trying to put a stone over that idea, though. Sunshine on him. Mice, rabbits, squirrels. No longer competing, but sharing resources. Joined together by one thing. The fear of you. You've earned that fear, even if you don't think you deserve it. If I let them take my teeth, will I be safe here from the wolves and gluttons and all the rest? Safe isn't a place. It's like the wind. Sometimes here, sometimes not. I should just run back into the forest. Forget all of this. Maybe. Regardless, I won't let them take your teeth. This idea of Orin's deserves to grow straight and true, not twisted like roots around stone. But what about egg? <sighs> Hunting to eat, I understand that. What happened to egg was wrong. You have to understand, the Dre was new and blind like a kitten. We were still jumping at every shadow. Hemlock found Egg lost in the woods. She brought her back to show the others how much stronger we were than predators now. I wish I could say I tried to stop it, but I felt powerful to be the one spilling blood for once. But then what came after? Egg was broken and helpless. I wasn't fighting to defend myself. This was something else. It felt ugly. Oren had the courage to stop it. And I realized, what am I if I use another suffering to lick a wound when the real problem is the thorn? Not any better than I was, that's for sure. Egg was too injured to go anywhere, so Oren moved her to the far side of the hollow. She nearly starved, but Oren had the bright idea of digging up duck eggs and worms and the like. She just wasn't what a badger should be anymore. I think the rocks took more than just her teeth. But she's never been a problem, so she stays. If Egg hasn't been a threat, maybe Hemlock will realize I- No. Hemlock is a wildfire. She'll burn everything down and die with a hiss. You'll get no pity from her. Aha! Got it! Can you make it into a fish again? Hey, Egg, how do you not get bored here? <sighs> Rask, was it? Take a walk with me. I speak slow, but tell me if I totter too fast. What do you think of Egg? She seems content. You probably dug up her story by now. She isn't here by choice, not really. You, though. <laughs> Why did you come here, Rosk? My uncle. A porcupine told him of a beast who caught the sun in a place where animals didn't need to fear being eaten. He thought we would be safe here, that nothing would ever harm us again. The only place I know like that is death. So it was all for nothing. Nothing is ever nothing. I don't have the sun, but it may be a new dawn. Is this where you make those teeth? 
<laughs> Everything is teeth with hunters, isn't it? It's metal, and yes, this is what I make it. It is like the sun. I can't save you, Rask. Neither can the metal. It's only a symbol. I actually started to believe him. I really hoped that everything would just be alright somehow. But nothing is different here. I'm still scared. It's just new animals that want to kill me or worse. At least getting eaten, I understand. But this place? Hmm. When I was a kid, the last thing my mother told me was, don't be scared, just run. I wondered for a long time why she'd say that, when obviously running and fear were the same thing. What do you mean? These old bones. Ugh. Running is behind me now, but I still have a long memory, so let me tell you a story. Long ago, when I was not much more than a spring hare, I ran from the valley. It's quite the tale with a one-eyed wolf and a bear, but too long for tonight. What matters is, by the time I left, I was alone. I wasn't looking for anything then. I just wanted to do more than die every day in small bites. Far to the south, across the dry land, I found the conclave. Prey, you'd call them, or different animals living together and focused on a great warren. I'd never seen anything like it. They taught me that life is more than just the fear of losing it. Life is a rich green land. Dangerous, yes, but also beautiful and sweet. It was there I learned to tame the fires and make dust to dirt, to bend their shapes, to make something new. And I started to wonder if everything could change in that same way, and my old home valley could change. I knew then what my mother had meant. I couldn't take away the dangers of the world, but I could change how we meet those dangers. Strip the fear away from that green lawn inside us and see what grows. Maybe that isn't what you wanted, but it's what you found. But, where do I fit in? Honestly, Martin, I'm not sure. But you're here, talking to an old main rabbit without trying to eat me even once. Maybe you're already a little different than you were at the start. Sprig spoke for you. He thinks your use outweighs the risk. Oh, I think you might help the others master their fear. So I find myself at a split in the trail. Perhaps you are here willing to sacrifice everything you've known to become something new. But if I'm wrong, and you can't control your own primal instincts, everything falls apart. I won't hurt anyone. You don't need to take my teeth or- No more talk for tonight. I've enough bark to chew on already. Come, I'll walk you back to Egg. Rest easy, Rosk. For tonight, at least, you're safe. Hemlock? You don't have to watch them day and night. Others- Having the Martin here is a mistake, Orin. Weasels are sly. Who knows? Hemlock, I know you've lost loved ones, but you have to see what's here, not- You have no idea what I've seen, Orin. All right, so tell me. You think you're so clever, always one step ahead of the world. But you're not the only animal changing. My Warren was small. A few cousins, my sisters, the mates. I lost my own mate, an eldest kicked coyotes, but I still had my two littlest. We moved to new grounds often, thinking we were clever, always having fat winters and warm summers. Then the lions came. They were like a pack of wolves, not cats. Some of us tried to run. The cat used strips of skin, set up in the grass. They coil like a snake when you run through them. I'd never seen tricks like it, until I met you. Those of us who tried to hide were dragged out from the burrows. They kept us on, like berries on a branch. Fresh meat without needing to chase us down. When the cat slept during midday, we dig. We had to cover the tunnel entrance each dusk, dig it out each midday. It was so slow. There were fewer and fewer of us the longer we stayed. <laughs> we took my little girl, Ollie. I listened as they tore her legs at a run only to tear her more. She cried out for me, begged, screamed while they laughed. They were bored and cruel all at once. But it wasn't hunting anymore. It was a game. After time, it was only me, a cousin, and my little one. We were so close to digging free when... Esther, they're stirring. They came for my little thistle. Snag that little morsel. I wouldn't... I wouldn't give him up. I couldn't. After what had happened to his sister, I tried to fight. But they were relentless. They'd take him no matter what I did. To hear another kit cry for me while they laughed, I... He couldn't. I did what a mother had to do. see you soon. They ate his body at the pit's edge. Emlock, don't go far now. This is our chance. Go, go! I was in shock, but my cousin started digging while they were distracted. 
The lion's caught wind. <laughs> it's like my cousin would have had me, too. But the tunnel collapsed behind me. I ran. All I could do then was run. <laughs> Hemlock, I... You see now? Even if the marten is a meek, tamed hunter today, what happens when the bugs die off and the lake freezes over? Do you set him loose on others? On our own? Uh, perhaps he'll have a solution we can't conceive. You're refusing to see the tracks in front of you. Predators aren't stupid, Orin. They're hungry. He stumbled into a fat winter food cache, jaws waiting to snap when our throats are exposed. You need to be either faster or fiercer to survive, and we've already made the choice to stop running. I won't lose another family, Orin. We're changing the world so no one has to. Ever again. Eight months on one day. That's not bad. I had to remove SolidWorks on my computer for this. Hey everyone, from the bowels of the World Wide Web, I'm Savoe Fredrickson. F I want to give a big thank you to everyone who watched this video. I worked really hard on it. It is by far my most technologically demanding video of all. Look, look at all that. Look at all those audio channels. So anyway, I want to give a big shout out to Tegan Gavette for creating this comic and also giving me permission to create this dub. I really, really appreciate you. Thank you very, very much for allowing me to do this comic dub. I, yeah, words cannot describe. I also want to give a big shout out to my older sister who voiced Egg, and my younger sister who voiced Hemlock, and my brother-in-law who provided the voices for the cougar. I can't thank you enough for all these things, for you to lend your voice to this comic dub. You know, yeah. <laughs> I also want to give a big shout out to Maximus Koyorax for his cameo as Krayek. I really thank you very, very, very much. I can't describe the words. Yeah, I, I'm just, I'm just alibi at this point. But yeah, thank you very much to Maximus Koyorax for his cameo. I know that you really enjoyed it. Thank you very much for all that. And yeah, hopefully if I do part three, it won't be as technologically demanding. You got what you give and all that. Bye.